Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us all stand this morning with the Lord in prayer. Uh, maybe you remember my mother. She's in the hospital, had an operation on her gallbladder. So, uh, but it seems like it's going okay. So, praise the Lord. Is there other requests? Yes. Your sister, yes. Sarah. The baby needs a heart operation, a new baby. Okay, yes. Unspoken. Karen, Kathy, yes. All right. Heavenly Father, as we come before thee, we thank you, Lord, that you know all these things, Lord. And Lord, as we come before thee, Lord, asking, Lord, that you look upon these requests, Lord. And Lord, whether it's a touch of healing, O oh Lord, or the comforting of thy spirit, Lord. Lord, you know what the need are, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, this morning we can approach thee through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we commit the service in your hands. We ask it in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We see it this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Mike to come lead us in the song service. I'm thankful to the Lord today. Uh, last weekend, I had uh, I had Saturday night off because it was a holiday, and I, had, I was supposed to work Sunday night, so we were going to come here. But Joyce <coughs> Joyce was brushing her teeth, and when she was done brushing her teeth, her jaw moved right over her. And the, so the next day, we, we we ended up going to the hospital Sunday morning, but uh, they didn't really know what was wrong with her. They, they kind of hadn't seen it before, so we went to a, or she had to go to the dentist again after that, and they. They got an antibiotic drop that they put in her ear. The infection was actually on the inside of her ear instead of on the outside, and it moved her jaw over. But uh, she's getting better. She's on the mend. <laughs> and I'm thankful. Um, I think it's 123 in the red book. No, I got the wrong one. Uh, 213, sorry. 213 in the red book. Close. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's in the same book. <laughs> okay. On the cross of Calvary, our blessed Savior died. Gave his life.
Did anyone have a testimony or a song on their heart? <laughs> Is it in the book? Or the little one, no. Did you want to come up and sing it, Wanda? Oh. <laughs> Three thirty nine in the blue book. Yeah.
Walking with Jesus on heaven, no view, no sorrow, no sickness, no burdens to bear. Wait till you see me with Jesus up there. have a song? I've been struggling with a laryngitis, so I might go down to bass and up to soprano all of a sudden. <laughs> See, Jana. That was clear. <coughs>
And I said my last goodbye And I see my Savior standing at the door I hear and say a welcome How you try Down this road, I can see a bright light shining for me. It's far away, but the pull is strong. Someday, this old road. So
forget you when I like we have singers this morning. <laughs> They're looking pretty timid, I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Can you crack up the door? One. Hello.
Do you know how it feels to know something's missing? To hear a small voice you just keep dismissing? Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside? And to think that for you on that cross someone died? Do you know how it feels when he knocks you surrender? Have your sins washed away, never to be remembered? And you know that it's real, tell me, do you know how it feels? How does it feel to know you're a child of the King? Your heavenly Father knows everything. How does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above? does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night and you know that it's real tell me do you know how it feels do you know how it feels when your cold heart is melted and tears start to flow the moment you felt it do you know it feels to know you've been changed and it seems the whole world has been rearranged do you know how it feels wherever you roam you still get a feeling that you're not at home knowing heaven is real tell me do you know how it feels child of the king your heavenly father owns everything how does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the star how does it feel to know you're alright when you lay your head on your pillow each night and you know that it's real tell me do how it feels do you know how it feels to know something's missing to hear that small voice you just keep dismissing do you know how it feels to be troubled inside and to think that for you on a cross someone died do you know how it feels when he knocks you surrender have your sins washed away then remembered and you know that it's real tell me do you know how it feels how does it feel to know the child of the king the heavenly father
Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for his presence, his spirit. He can change our day our nights into day pretty quick. Praise the Lord. And I'm so thankful that he can do that. Because there's time we need to be lifted up, regenerated, and renewed, and praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come at this part of the service, Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would have your way, Lord, in the things, Lord, that we are looking at in this hour. I thank you, Lord, for your word, and now I commit it in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. You can be seated this morning. As you can see, uh, it's just a little diagram showing the different parts of the life of a Christian. How that we start when we didn't, when before God called us, we weren't even saved. But when He called you and I, we're, we were just babes in Christ, just beginners. We're just like babies that depends on their parents. And how wonderful that is, especially in those earlier days, I don't know about you, but it seems like when God was, would deal with an individual, you, everything is bright, everything is new, uh, especially when you get to see that the blood of Jesus Christ is there for your sinful nature, you're free as a bird, no cares in this life. And that's all well and fine because a baby needs to be nurtured and not nurtured by men, but by the Spirit of God. That new birth will take you to the place where he can feed you milk for a space of time. And I'm thankful that he does because it's just like giving meat to a little baby. You're going to hurt it. You're going to hurt his stomach. It won't be able to digest things, and things won't work well. This morning, really, as a title, I would say we're looking at the last chapter of the book of Acts. As we, we look into this, this subject here this morning, there's not going to be another generation for the bride. Because when that seventh seal is broke, there's no more bride added to it. And I'm thankful the Lord has opened up our eyes, especially in these last little while, in this third watch, in the fivefold ministry, that we know the time we're living in. And it's True to those that believe and have the Spirit of God that, has, that could see the picture. And how that 
by certain things that we've looked at in the past concerning how that the centuries was over. As when Jesus spoke to the disciples, he says, of that day or that hour, of that time and that season, it's not for you to know. But I'm glad we're, that he didn't meant it for everybody for all times. But we're here at the end time. He, we, he has opened up to us. It is for us to know the times and the seasons. Because if we don't know the times and the seasons, then we're no better off than the denominational church. They're no better off than the brand of movement. And no better off than the Brother Jackson's movement. Because what's happening, if we don't see this hour, the five-fold ministry's hour, then somewhere things are not going to come into place where, you, where a child of God will be made ready for that rapture or knowing the time when you're getting that close. And I know often it's been brought forth that how that the miracle war, the temple, and the Ezekiel war. And it is a signpost to us, but that does not prepare us. That's to the Jews. But the fivefold ministry in the third watch is to us and not to the Jews. And so we are living in this last generation. Now, as you look at uh, on the screen, there are three stages in which God deals with a child of his. And that don't mean you have to, especially when we're saying this is the last generation, that don't mean you have to be born way back in 1967. God holds the speed and the realm, how those three stages are applicable to the bride of Christ. Now, you can't be a babe in Christ, starting you as a babe in Christ to be in the bride, if we're just on the doorstep of the seventh seal be actually being broke. Because there needs to be time that we need to be taught under a tutorship, which is the Holy Spirit. It's been the Holy Spirit all along, all along that has guided the child of his, a true child, how that to walk when he was a babe, then he grew up and started putting away childless things. And God wants us to grow, and in order to grow, it's just like in the natural life. As a child, and had my grandkids lately, not that I want to speak about them, we all have grandkids, they learn up to a certain point, but there comes a time you cannot shelter them so much that they have to learn the school of hard knocks. Not that you want them to go through hard knocks all the time, but it's essential for the growth of that child to grow into something that would be functionable in society. And so is it with a child of God when he picks you and I up. The first thing we need to know is I can't save myself. No matter how much good I do or, or bad that I might think in my own mind, that doesn't lie there whatsoever. I'm going according to my thoughts rather than the Word of God says, the provided way that God had provided, His only begotten Son that died on the cross of Calvary, paid the price for you and I that we could go free. He didn't say you have to work for it. Just live it. And so therefore, as a child, it's that simple. The blood of Christ deals with my nature that wants to do wrong. Now, while you're a child, that blood of Christ is looking over you because you don't know everything. Although there are some sometimes I've seen those that were starting out, and I have met a few that was going to a Bible school in a theology school, and they were just starting out, they thought they knew everything. Well, time shows that they didn't. But a true child of God, he will listen to that spirit that's inside him 
if there's ever something you can lean on to know what the truth is, it's not because, well, he's a, here's a recognized man of God. Here, Brother Brandon was a prophet. That's fine to know that, but that don't guide you. Yes, God used him to bring wonderful things, but for the child of God to begin with, he needs that Holy Spirit, that, it, that Spirit says that is truth to you. And so you don't have to ask, well, brother, do you think I, I got it? Do you think that's true? Uh, if everybody else is claiming it's okay and we know that Brother Brian was a prophet, that has nothing to do with those areas. He starts leading you as a child. But then we can't remain as a child always. Because after a while, we are under tutorship. How many knows? And that's for a space of time besides that. I didn't put it in. Okay, I'll go get it. Galatians. Verse 5. Galatians 4 and 2, sorry. Got the wrong place. Galatians 4, 2. There. But you and I are under tutorship. And governors until the appointed time of the Father. Who's the tutor? It's the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. Governors, plural. That would be the ministry at the time, the true ministry that would be guiding and God using, speaking through it to govern us in what we should be as we are walking with him. Well, how long does that take? It's in the Father's hand. Because you and I grow differently at different times, different lengths. How we progress depends on how much we want to walk with the Lord. And that also depends on what the ability that God's seen in you to walk in truth to begin with. So as we are in, as being under tutorship, I'm using this as an example, an overall example. It's not, you can't take it for everyone, but as an overall period of time that we're living in. When we're, those that would be under tutorship, their list, the tutorship is in this much, that the Lord uses a ministry to speak, and although it's wonderful to have a ministry, but it lies with the Holy Spirit to confirm the word that is coming forth from the governors. Because we know in the world there's many voices out there. Have all different kind of ideas and they're all claiming to be part of the bride. They're all going to the rapture and they're believing several ways for Sunday. It's, it's all different. But somewhere God, if you want to know the truth, if you want to know where it lies in, if you want peace in your soul, it's that Holy Spirit you have to lean on. Now, while we're under tutorship, your growth is now dependent on the ministry of the hour in which you're growing as being now no longer a babe, but a child growing up into towards adult, adulthood, if you want to. But once you've reached adulthood, then you move on into what's called your full-fledged development where God has now trained you in your tutorship, and now you are on the front line 
whether a believer or in the ministry, that God's using you to bring forth his word or as a witness to his word if you're as a believer. Where am I going with this this morning? I want to go to Matthew chapter 25. We could use Matthew chapter 25 and also Luke chapter 19, but I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 25 this morning. Starting at the 14th verse, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto everyone he gave five to another two, to another one, every one according to several abilities, and straightway took his journey. Now verse 16. Then he that had received five talents received them. And he traded with the same and made them other five talents. Now there's he in verse 17. So likewise, he that received two also gained two. Where in the point as using this diagram here this morning, where did they receive the talent? They received it while under tutorship. No, not when it starts, but your growth, everything that you receive as a base of what God's going to use you for, it's under the tutorship that you're receiving it. It is. Use as a base from where God's going to use you from a certain starting point. It's not because you, they are, as you're in tutorship, you're not into a ministry. You may be one that God's going to select to be in the ministry or a believer for whatever purpose God wants to use that person for. It's while in tutorship that you receive these talents. And once you have received them, then when it comes time appointed by the Father that he's given you and made you received it. Now he puts you to work and the gaining is done while you are now seasoned, a full seasoned Christian and going forward. Does this make sense? To, it made sense to me. I don't know about you. But we're going to go with somewhere with this. Because we're going to open up a few things this morning. How we're looking at the life of a Christian. First of all, if we're looking for growth or going towards perfection, you will not be perfected by your heart's desire. It's going to be by the revelated word of God. Because he's perfecting you according to his word as you and I walk faithfully in it. And that will produce, by walking in it and going under the trials and the tests, it's going to produce those attributes and those characteristics of Christ. Just a human desire won't do it. You go to any denominational church. Are they growing? They believe they are. We're getting closer to Jesus. In their mind, they're convinced. But in reality, they're not. Because they didn't see that it's the image of Christ we have to come into, and that to grow into that image of Christ can only be done by the revelated word of God, and it's not just what Jesus spoke on when he was here on earth, or what the, the apostles, the doctrine, their doctrines, but it's also in this hour for growth. Because the 
bride, her growth in this hour, the light she has to shine is not the light of one day. She has to shine the light of seven days. Well, then you're trampling all over perfection. God sees you perfect for your generation and your time. He saw the apostles in the early church perfect for their day. He saw Martin Luther perfect for his day. And if you and I are going to be perfect for this day, it's not just the ministry of Brother Branham or the ministry of Brother Jackson. There's going to be the ministry of that fivefold ministry. And they're just not going to be dwelling only in those things because it's a secure area. That tells me someone's not leaning on the Holy Ghost. I can be safe and stay in the realm what they say if I'm a Branhamite. I'll just preach what Brother Branham says. And there's groups there, they believe that they're going, they're going to be part of that rapture. They're gonna they're gonna know when that seventh well, some don't know when the they think the seventh seal's already broke, and some of them don't. Depends what, what camp division there is. But when you bring it up to Brother Jackson's hour, everyone that's has heard his message, it's all believing they are the ones that's going to be made ready for there. And the things that the ministry is going forth in this hour have been, yes, under tutorship they received. Yes, it was talents for the early church. That's in Matthew 25. But in Luke 19, it calls it pounds. Pounds and talents, it's all pointing to revelation, the word of God. So now, the things that we received, we were under tutorship. We received it in the days under that ministry for you and I, for my generation. It was under Brother Jackson. It wasn't him. It was Jesus Christ bringing forth his word. But you and I were under tutorship. When God moved into the third watch, and the apostle, Brother Jackson, passes away. Now the bride has moved into a fivefold ministry. The things that we preach, if I'm just preaching what Brother Brandon brought and Brother Jackson brought, I am not part of that third watch. I'm no different than those that's just keeping in the days of Brother Branham. And I know they don't, people don't like this and they don't like to hear it. If I didn't care, I said, hey, have your way. I'll preach something safe. I wouldn't even bother putting the internet on. Well, you're making me, well, let me put it this way. Somebody has to say something. Because if we're just staying over there, we will never get ready. And I want to repeat again, knowing that there's a miracle war and a temple being built and the Ezekiel war is for the Jews. Yes, it's a timepiece. Knowing a timepiece doesn't make you ready. It just shows you the road to it. But things that are ministered in this hour is part of the being made ready process for the final stage, for this last generation, for this till we reach to the time of that seventh seal that is just before us. All right? Is this uh, clear enough somewhat? All right. Now, as we're, we were being tutored, whether you want to look at it in the days of Brother Branham or in the days of Brother Jackson, the ministry that was going to go forth from that's hearing from the ministry of the, that hour, they are receiving it under tutorship. Receiving it doesn't mean you have grown in it. He's given it to you. He's protected you. He has caused an atmosphere for you to receive it. But we can't just stay as being a teenager or a young person. Then we must move into the part that we are adult going forward. And yes, 
There's that scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Oh, if you go around the, Br the Branham camp, bingo, that's right on. But the scripture goes on to say, he that receives a righteous man, receive a righteous man's reward. That's talking about the New Testament ministry now. And so therefore, if I'm stuck just in the days of Brother Branham, yes, there's that prophet reward, but God didn't just stay there. If I stay there, I will lose out because it shows I don't have the spirit of Christ when I have to go out and have an increase. If there's no increase, if there's no growth, you are dying or being sidetracked. God is putting some people aside. Because what do you think happened in the days of Brother Branham? They didn't want to move on in what, what God was doing through an apostle ministry. They have been sidetracked. Well, let's face the reality. That's what actually happened to those that stayed there. And now the Lord had, when he brought the prophet off the scene, now he brings an apostle on the scene. And as the people walked in it, you were being protected, tutored, and before this generation goes into full-fledged walking in that five-fold ministry or in that time of the third watch. So staying in just what God used that beloved apostle for, then you're no different than the Branham movement. You will suffer the same fate. Because if you don't, then God's going to have to honor them too. Isn't that the truth? So God is always moving on in truth. It's when we put a barrier and saying, well, we can't go any further because we don't know anybody else and we can't trust anybody else. Let's just say where it's safe. You're not leaning on the Holy Spirit. You're not recognizing your hour. In, well, before I get into the other things I want to get into, I remember in the earlier days, not when I just got saved, but in the 80s, I started having some dreams. And there's nobody you can go to, there was no Brother Branham around saying, this is what that dream means. And, I mean, for people that's listening on the internet, they don't know whether that be true or not. And that's fine. But I remembered I had, on different occasion, dreams. I see a table. See Brother Jackson sitting in the middle? There's people on the left side people on the right side. The people on the left side, I seen their faces, I knew who they were, knew their names. But when it came the first time, I was wondering, what is, what is this all about? Because, hey, okay, you see a table, Brother Jackson. But in time, the Lord let me know it was not Brother Jackson, but it was the Lord using that image that he was separating, taking bringing into fulfillment Matthew chapter 13, verse 41, he will remove everything that offends or things that commits iniquity. He knows who will and who won't. And as that, those dreams would come, I'd, I'd see the people, and for the first time when I'd seen that, well, I was kind of worried, so I tried to reach them. I didn't tell them that, about the dream, because... I felt the Spirit was constraining me from saying who they were and for what reason. So you tried to go after them to bring them in, thinking maybe if you just preach it enough, if you show them enough, they'll come. They didn't. The next time, the same thing. It's the Lord actually cleaning out. He knows who will and who won't. 
In our mind, I thought certain ones, surely these are can't, shouldn't be on that side. They should be over here. But in time, it, this didn't go three months, six months, and those that I seen on that side were gone. It was part of discernment that the Lord was starting to show. And as it came later on, I seen the faces of people. I knew better not to go say, well, these ones ain't going to make it. I would you imagine what, if, you, if you come on the pulpit, you can't tell everything that God sometimes shows you, not to the detail. And so I said, Lord, it's pretty rough. Yes, it is. Then there was, in one of the last dreams, in that period of time, which that was over the course of 10 years, and it's not that you had one every week. There might have been four or five. Then came this last one. And in it, I was standing on a hillside. There, too. Now, I didn't see Brother Jackson. It was people put on one side and people put on the other side. The situation was so desperate that I felt almost like fainting. And someone came up and put a towel on my face because they felt I was really in distress. When that dream ended, well, I thought, well, I didn't even bother marking it down. And over a course of a year or so, I forgot about it and left it alongside. Then later on, two years later, Sister Teresa comes over. She said, I had a dream about you. Oh, I wasn't thinking of anything. Well, okay, anybody can have a dream. And she started relating the dream. She saw the very same thing that was shown to me two years earlier. I could say, did you see who that was? And those were over there? Yes. And over there. And, that's, and she's the one that said that she came and she put that towel because I was about... You know how you're really desperate, and not desperate, but so pressured. And so God confirmed it through someone else about this division that was taking, going to take place. God knows how to confirm a dream. She didn't know what I had dreamed. I hadn't told it. But when she came and said what she said, and she could see, as, as if we'd seen the same movie. I said, what about the, how was it laid over there? Yeah, the, and then she gave more details, which I didn't tell. So God was confirming that he had been dealing with me in the terms of dreams. But then later on, it was, with the word of God comes a spirit of discernment. You can pick up who's following the Lord and who's not. And so, just like what we spoke about a few weeks ago, how that the Lord's going to separate the sheep from the goats. In those dreams, it was always those that was leaving was on the left-hand side, which was just like the goats, just like the parable says, but it hadn't, had nothing to do with the millennium subjects. This had to do with people in the bride. And Lord knows, even later on, when I thought there might have been a glimpse, some to come, and I know sometimes there's the opinion, well, you should go after them. If the Lord has caused a separation, if he has shown what it is, there's nothing you can do. Even if it's your relative. Because he's made the decision, he knows the heart. So, well, I'll just maybe, uh, I just want to relate to a certain part. God has been dealing and showing things over the years. But I was under tutorship. But certain things God was going to use was going to be needed for, for the ministry that I was going to go into that I didn't really want it to go into at the time. Because if I remember Brother Jim, he wanted, want no. Well, he knew I was doing, we were doing the Bible studies. 
But he says, he wanted me to step in, into the pulpit, and I said no. And as he's, he asked uh, a few times, and the last time he says, well, if something happens to me, will you step in? Well, I said, okay, if something does happen, uh, uh, won't leave the brothers and sisters without. And it didn't go long after that, and here I am. You're there. Now, Bible study was great because you, have, you take a subject, there's a response back and forth, and all of a sudden you're standing in the pulpit and, oh, nobody's answering. So it's a different st stage in life that God brings you through. Now, getting back to while we're under tutorship, as we looked into Matthew chapter 25, or I could use Luke chapter 19, verse 16 on, on down. He gave talents. But while he's giving talents, in those talents was not just old meat, The body and those that were listening to the ministry, whether, whether you t take Brother Branham or Brother Jackson's ministry, when God started bringing forth his word, you were seeing things new and you were seeing things old that was brought to light. But you weren't the one that was bringing it forth. God had a mouthpiece, a headship that he was using with. And so while we are under, how, how many new things did we see under that? Apostolic ministry. But that, may, that didn't mean you had to be an apostle to receive anything new and things old. God used a certain voice to bring it forth, but the same spirit that gave it to that voice is the same spirit that gives it to the recipient of the bride that receives it. That makes sense? Now, if God can do that, once... We're under tutorship and we move in, into that fivefold ministry. In that third watch. Now we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24. Verse 45. Who then is a wise, he is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord made him ruler over his household, not a householder. In other words, over the church. To give meat in due season. But while God uses a wise servant to do that, and we're looking at Let's look at, the, for instance, the ministry of Brother Jackson. There was other ministries in his day and his hour. And through his ministry, he brought things new and old. But he was the voice, the mouthpiece that God was using. Jesus was using him. And so the ministry that was alive at that hour... They got to see things new and old, but it's not because they brought it. It's because the spirit that gave it to him was giving it to them as well. And not only to them, but also the bride itself. Now when we get to, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 52, then he said unto them, Every scribe who is instructed in the kingdom of heaven, where did he get his instruction? While well, he was under tutorship. Is like unto the man that is a ho an, an householder, a ha householder, not his household, but a householder means he's in charge of an assembly somewhere. So which bringeth forth out of his treasures things new and old. That has nothing to do if it's a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, 
that he's the mouthpiece to bring things new and old in that time frame that he's living. He will accept what's new and old by the voice that God is using at that hour. That's how it worked in the days of Brother Branham, how it worked in the days of Brother Jackson. Now granted, there are men that had been under tutorship and they want to bring things new and old. Yes, they bring things new and old, but they're all false. It sounds so good when they bring it out. It looks like it's going to be going somewhere. Only to go six months and that falls flat on the ground. Because God brings his word and he blows that all to pieces. Time will test the revelation. God's revelation is time tested. Praise the Lord, right? So, now he says, he is a householder. Brings out of his treasure things new and old. What is that treasure of things new and old? It's the thing he hears in his day. You can hear things new and old under tutorship, but you're not the one bringing it out. And neither is the fivefold ministry, except it's the apostolic ministry bringing things new and old. Yes, the ministry can break things about and elaborate on it, but not bring something new because sometimes when we look in that direction, some feel offended because they know that God's called them to the ministry and everybody is aspiring to be an apostle somehow. There's only... God always uses a main voice down through, and it's his voice, not the person that's speaking to you, but do you need the Holy Ghost to recognize that voice? And if this voice that's speaking causing you to turn back, like it does the Brandon people turn away from Brother Jackson, it's just it's like the same thing in this hour. It may be harsh, but you're going to be running in circles. No more fresh meat. In time, you're going to get hungry. And you're going to dwindle. The congregation is going to dwindle. It's no different than what's happening in the denominational church. And if you want the example of, it, of that being extreme, you go to a Catholic church. They got a program every four years, and things repeat. The cycle goes over again, over and over and over. After a while, you get to wonder, well, don't they know anything else? Doesn't God have anything else in his word? And that's why those churches are empty, or partly being emptied. In this hour, there's a spirit of doing your own things. My pleasure counts more than doing things for God or going, going to assemble myself with the children of God. Oh, it's a nice day on Sunday, warm. I'm going to the beach. I can hear the message anytime, and if it's a rainy place or I don't have much to do, I'll go to church. What happens to a person like that? He's not being fed. Because if he's being fed, if somebody invites you to a steak dinner, a sirloin steak, you want to be there, right? But he says, if we're going to have just crackers and a little bit of, you know, jelly on them, well, you can get that anytime. I'm not saying this to hurt. I'm, the reason I speak in this way is to wake up. Has God or has not God shown something in this hour beside what Brother Jackson brought? But it'll go hand in hand with what he brought. Now there are areas that Brother Jackson, God used him, that Brother Brown would never touch. But does that make it wrong? No. There's certain things God has allowed us to see in this hour that Brother Jackson didn't touch. And because Brother Jackson didn't say it, it can't be. You're, depend, you're leaning on flesh, your own mind, and analyzing the situation. 
rather than the Spirit of God looking at His Word and seeing and getting on your knees and saying, Lord, is this the truth? Because if we're, we're preaching here is error, it's going to fall apart. And somebody will bring a truth that will knock it all to pieces. But if it's the truth, you can't knock it to pieces. You can't move God's word that way. So this householder, he brings forth out of his treasure. Where's that? It's, what is your treasure? It's the beautiful things that you have accumulated that you love, not your basic salvation. That's fine for a babe or under tutorship for a while. But these are the things that you have seen and God has given to you in your hour, in your day. Because Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, it says here, And a good man out of his good treasure of the heart bring forth good things. And an evil man out of his treasure brings forth evil things. Out of a, a good man out of a good tree brings forth a true revelation. But an evil man, he's not the sinner or the crook or the thief on the street. He's the one that has, my ideas are just good. And he brings things that just excites, which God sees it being an anti-word, and he sees that as being evil. Does that exist today? Sure it does. Who's going to show you? Well, we'll get the preacher and so-and-so if they all get a line. Yeah, well, no. You need to rely on that Holy Spirit inside you. It's what has brought you this far, unless you were leaning on, well, yes, he brought, the Lord brought me certain things, but now I analyzed it and I can see it here. Seeing it with your own intelligence doesn't mean you're seeing it spiritually. So those under the first watch, if you take the tutorship and being seasoned as you would play out in, in that first watch, if there's nothing to show them what took place in a second watch, they're just stuck there in that first watch. If while being under tutorship in the second watch, that's all you see, and you can't see any further, and you don't know any further. And seeing any further doesn't mean taking a fresh meat and expounding it a little bit more. That's not fresh meat. That's, what part, that's the function of the ministry. It's to bring it forth and break it down so the people can receive it. Then you are stuck here. God has brought some things new and old in this third watch. And when is that third watch? It's in this hour. Here are some things that, just a few things that God has opened up in this hour. There's a whole bunch of other things. No, they're not a multitude of things. Praise the Lord. I'd have to ask, does any in the movement know when the judgment seat of Christ is? And if you do, why don't you bring it forth? And let it be tested with time. Sevenfold light. Has it still be st stood up? Sure. Because what do you think those parables of Luke chapter 19 and Matthew chapter 25, they increased. They didn't say in the same light in which they were tutored under. 
the apostle didn't stay in the same light that Jesus brought forth. Well, that was very needful. But once they were under, stopped being under tutorship and he started using them, they increased. But the light that was in the early church was the light of one day. And they walked very faithfully, those that sometimes, I, if we were in that hour, some of us would have our fingers burnt or be scolded. <laughs> and now we live here today in the 21st century. But that light of that hour, God in his infinite wisdom, in his plan, had a whole lot more things to bring forth, and he saved it for the last in this last generation. You and I are in the last generation that there's going to be a bride member be part of that bride. Because once that seventh seal is broke, there is no more bride added to the ranks. So we are in the last generation, and we also in writing the last chapter of the book of Acts, which is happening now in this third watch. Because God's going to bring it to a close, a completion, in the hour that you and I live in. In Hebrews chapter 5, I'm just going to quote it, or maybe I might have it here. Hebrews chapter 5, 11. Now Jesus, it says here, sorry, and uh, we're talking about Jesus, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. How beautiful that was. He's not after the order of the Old Testament priests because he was on a Levi, remember? And of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. So Paul had a problem in even his day. Some were dull of hearing because they were staying back in the past. Leaning and putting their confidence in the past. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, and he's talking about those that were teaching in the ministry, now, not the true ministry was at that, that hour, but there was, there was those. You have need of one to teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracle of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. On the milk of the word. To have strong meat, that means you have to have been made to be grown up in the different stages. You came from a babe under tutorship. Now you're full-fledged walking out as God's going to use you as an example or an ambassador for him as we would go forward. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Do you have your senses to discern good and evil? Oh, yeah, I see the sinners out there. I see the, the thief. He's not talking about that realm concerning truth and error. Do you have your senses? Have you been trained? Have you been leaning on that Holy Ghost to show you discernment what's a true revelation and what's a false one? Or do you have to wait someone to tell you and then maybe if so many people accept it then, then I can see that's false and this is truth over here. That's leaning on the arms of flesh. This is the hour, this is the day whether you're in the ministry or whether you're a believer. God is kicking out the crutches from under us if we're leaning 
on fleshly vessels. We need to be leaning on him to lead us through. Because the only way you're going to have peace on what's being brought forth as a true revelation is if that Holy Spirit inside, he says he'll show you things to come, and he will confirm that is truth. You'll be at peace with it. You won't try to wrestle trying to understand it. What's he trying to say? What is it here and there? Yes, there's times where if we don't have certain backgrounds, if we're just new, it takes time to look and see things. I can, I can accept that. That's not a problem. But if you've been seasoned for years and you have trouble, somewhere someone forgot the basic things of leaning on that Holy Spirit because when he's going to show things to come, he's going to show things new and things old. And it's not going to be in this hour. All the fivefold ministry is going to bring everything new and everything old. It's only through the apostolic ministry. And there's just not one in this hour. He said in Ephesians chapter 4 that there would be apostles, plural, S. But there's not a whole bunch of them. There are more few than what you, you realize. By what one, as, you test, as we would testify into the world, or speak to one another, or those that ministers, by what you minister identifies what watch you're in. You don't have to say anything. And if you want to really be safe, like Brother Ray says, says, says sometimes, if I came here and took part of this church and I never said anything, you wouldn't know anything about me to begin with. You could be safe because they can't accuse you of anything because you didn't say anything. But by your word you shall be condemned or by your word you shall be believed. So I don't, really, what it boils down to, because what is in your heart is what you're going to be speaking about. That's why the Branham people only group that only speaks about what Brother Branham said this, Brother Branham said this, and that, and then they'll use, yes, basic doctrines and so forth. Well, that's no different than the denominational world. Well, our head office says this and that, and that's all they know. That's all they want to know. That's not leaning on the Holy Spirit. And shouting, trying to get something across. Now you've got to get this right. Noise is not power. That's just some sort of banny rooster sounding off. God don't speak to you that way. If he ever did, you better watch out. <laughs> and then, well, you have to be meek in this hour. The five full ministry should be so meek. It'll be so meek that it can't bring a word, a revelation for it because it has to be accepted by the others. That's what they try to tell Brother, the Brandon will try to tell Brother Jackson. You're not meek. You're saying some things that that's against us. Well, he wasn't trying to plaster them. He was trying them to get the wake up for the truth that now that they were in, in the hour they were in. But they saw it in the reverse. He's got a spear. Uh, he's off. He's bringing in all these new doctrines and revelations. And these new revelations, I should say. Their mind's already made up. Can you do anything for them? No. Unless God puts a stop to them and starts speaking to them, this is my word. And every preacher that gets up on the platform, 
God's, this is God's word. Well, even the denominations do that too. But if the anointing is on it, it has an effect on both ends. Because the anointing that uses to preach the word is the same anointing that gets to receive it. So what I want to relate this morning is, while we're under tutorship, while we were, let's say I'm using that as an example, while we were under Brother Jackson's ministry, which is not his ministry, it was the Lord's, Jesus Christ's ministry, that he was feeding us. We weren't the one preaching, but we received things new and old. I didn't have to be an apostle. I just had to be a believer of Jesus Christ. Sitting at the time that he was breaking, that the Spirit of God was breaking these things forward. And what applies then applies in this hour when you're full grown as well. It seems like sometimes the spirit of the world gets on Christians as well. Well, I got to do better. I got to go up in the ranks. I'm running, a, I, I need to go up the, la the corporate ladder. I got news for you, that don't work with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ. The best thing that one can do is find out what is your ministry and stay within that realm. It's when we get out of that realm that what our ministry is, we get into trouble. And that's the fastest way to find out. We could close our eyes and say, no, it don't matter. But if you are a sensitive person of God, a child of God, then you're going to know whether what you're doing is right or wrong. We're in an hour separation. There's coming up the road. As sure as the world. When the Lord starts to move miraculously with this bride, his bride, every little group is not going to be confirmed. They will be condemned. Because the anointing will be there like it was in the days of the apostles. Because the way it is there now, there's, you couldn't take dynamite to change their minds of the different groups that even split off in, from Brother Brad Jackson's message, let alone Brother Branham's. Somebody don't have, it's hard to say, but somebody don't have the Holy Ghost. But they're good people. Yes, the same as I saw in the dreams. But that was according to my thinking of how it should be good. But he knows who's good and who's not. There's a lot of good people that lives in the denominational churches. Lives a holy, dress all right, and but give them the word test, you're going to find out where, what side your, your bread is buttered. That's the same thing in this hour. Some look so promising. Well, give it the word test, and you'll find out quick. Coming comes with the revelation of every hour. There's a discernment with it. Now, if, you, if I want to say something like this, some people say, well, you're tooting your horn. When I first started the ministry, Way back in 97, 98, two years down the road, Sister Riley, the one that brought Brother Jackson here, stood up and said, the Lord has shown me that he's given you the spirit of knowledge and wisdom. I was like, whoa, whoa, I was just starting out here. But I can see over time, now to, to some it's just like water running off a duck's back. Go ahead, play with it. I'm giving you something to play with. But I know what the truth is. The prophecies that came forth, I've got them here in my Bible.
Yeah, but you can't be a preacher. You never spoke in tongues. Tongues is not an evidence of a born-again Christian. It is a great gift. Wonderful. Actually, the sign of a tongues is for unbelievers. Now, if the Lord was giving me this, of, if you want to, the gift of tongues, I would kind of worry because I wonder if there's a whole lot of unbelievers in here. But what are dreams and visions? It's part of one of the nine spiritual gifts. Knowledge and wisdom. Does it give you to know everything? No. But surely somebody must have something somewhere, somehow. Or maybe I've said too much this morning. So things new and old... Don't let someone shove it down your throat that you can't have something new and old. No, you may not be the vessel that God used to bring it, but when it's brought forth, you are receiving things new and old, whether it's the ministry or whether it's the believer. Because if you couldn't receive things new and old, what are we doing here? We would have never believed Brother Jackson's or Brother Brown's message or the things the Lord would have. But I met my full load of those while the Lord showed me this, and the Lord showed me that. They came through here. You had different kinds of spirit come through, claiming this and the other thing. Some were on the gifts that they had this and that, the other thing. You need to be, you need to be slain in the spirit. You need to have the, those are wonderful things. But he has to bring it forth to make it a reality. Not because you're desiring the bride to do it. I can have the desire that everybody's going to have all the nine spiritual gifts. Tonight, everybody's going to have it. Is that going to make it so? No. Because if we believe what Jesus was saying, how he can, if we want to be like him, he says, I do nothing except what the Father shows me. But what the Father shows him, you can be sure the Father performed it. Now you're talking about that, well, you, you're, you're putting the dampers on gift, why not? Seek his face. It's not just the preachers that are going to have the nine spiritual gifts. It's for the body. Oh, I thought I just need to assemble myself together. I'm getting, uh, getting long-winded again. I better stop. I would love to see the gifts in operation. But on the other hand, I'm not going to start hammering. Oh, you got to have a gift. You got to have a gift. You got to have a gift. I know that when the time comes, God will cause that desire. In Azusa Street, God, did, preacher didn't have to pound on them and say, "Hey, you got to move in with the Spirit." No, they had a desire. And I'll tell you, I know it's true because when they had a desire, they prayed all night, and they prayed long in those days. How many can pray an hour? Huh? But if the spirit was moving in that realm, you'd be wanting to do it. Well, okay. Otherwise, I'm going to keep you here two hours or so, and then you say, well, he burnt my dinner again. Let's just stand at this time. Lord, I just pray... Lord, the words that were spoken, Lord, is so that we can see the hour we're in, the dangers and the traps of Satan in this hour. Lord, I'm just thankful for that you've kept us thus far. I'll commit this service in your hands and the rest of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Can we see it? We'll have maybe one hymn or song before we dismiss. Have new musicians to come.
His hand for me. When He reached down His hand for me, I was lost and undone without God or His Son. was lost and undone without God or His Son. When He reached down His hand for me. When He reached down His hand
Praise the Lord. Let you stand at this time. We're in a time that a lot of things are on the change. The Far East. The kings of the East got to be come together somehow. Some situation got to transpire out there. Europe got to come better together than what they're doing now. And they're looking now to have their own quick, ra ra rapid force. Israel's being pressured. The bride is getting near the time of her completion. That's the part I like. <laughs> well, especially when we get her change and we meet him in the air, praise the Lord. No more trials, no more tests, no more. But it'll be worth it all, praise the Lord. Lord, that we come at this time to thank you, Lord. Thank you. That thy protective hand has been over, Lord, each and every one. Lord, as we would go several ways, Lord, I just give us traveling mercy on the highway. And, Lord, the prayer request that's gone before thee, Lord, I know you know them all even before the foundation of the world. But, Lord, we ask that you look upon it now. I ask these things in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're dismissed. Praise the Lord.